Hey everybody, welcome to the real United States and welcome to Stanton Park here in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're only about, I don't know, three or four blocks down from Union Station, um, so not terribly far from the center of town. But uh, I'm here for a special reason, or what I think is a special reason, all right? We're here in front of this beautiful statue from 1877. I said that right, 1877. And this is General, Major General, Nathaniel Green. Now, Green was a, a native of Rhode Island, and uh, if you know much about the uh, Revolutionary period and uh, Rhode Island, Rhode Island had a, had a reputation for some time being a little balky about things. I'm sorry, Rhode Island, but you did. Um, they, they, they saw things differently than the other colonies. But be that as it may, Green, um, organized a group of militia to fight in the revolution. And uh, since he organized them, he was in command of them and he showed up ready to lead his, his militia from Rhode Island in battle. And the, the command of the Continental Army wasn't too convinced because Green had an accident as a child. I don't know, he was about 10 years old. And it gave him a pronounced limp and so they felt that that limp sort of disqualified him as a leader in the Continental Army. But Green wasn't having any part of it. He didn't care. He was going to enlist as a private. He was going to fight for the new nation. And he did. Well, if we back up, Green, his family owned a foundry. They were relatively well-to-do. And at this time, he had been running the family foundry, making a good living. He had plenty of money. And he liked to read. So what he did is he bought books. But he bought books on military strategy. He studied everything there was about military strategy because there was no military academy at the time. So he learned probably more about military strategy and military history and military maneuvers probably than anybody else in the theater, maybe more than George Washington himself. Well, it wasn't long before he proved himself on the field with the Rhode Island militia. And uh, the Second Continental Congress said, no, this guy's got to be way, he's way more important to us. So he went, when one day he went from a private to a brigadier general by an act of the Continental Congress. Voila. So in 1775, Green suddenly finds himself a brigadier and an adjutant to George Washington. Well, maybe not an adjutant yet. The following year in 1776, the Continental Congress promoted him again to Major General, and at this point he was definitely an adjutant to George Washington. And Washington considered him probably one of his most, if his not most, important and trusted generals, his lieutenants, if you will, but they were, of course, Major Generals. His immediate subordinates, he figured that Green was probably one of the best yeah, there was some, an incident where he lost the general's confidence a little bit, but he gained it back, and, and he always had that confidence from Washington. And he, he performed admirably, in so much so that he was later in the war given command of the southern forces down through the southern colonies in Georgia and the Carolinas and down that way, and was actually the person who led the troops that kind of cornered Cornwallis along the coast in Virginia. So he played a very significant role in the, in the defeat of Lord Cornwallis at, uh, at Yorktown. So anyway, this beautiful equestrian statue was placed here in 1877 in his honor. And it's such an incredibly important person in our history that it's, it's befitting that it's a gigantic statue. I mean, I'll put the dimensions down here on the screen below to give you some idea. I'm standing about halfway between the camera and it, so maybe it's hard to tell. But this is a gigantic piece of granite and a gigantic piece of bronze. Funny thing is, in 1930, this actually the weather got cold, and so the bolts got brittle, and there was a high wind, and it snapped the bolts, and this fell off. <laughs> and uh, had to be picked up with a crane and replaced back on the pedestal. We haven't had that problem with it again since. 
but I thought that was an interesting little bit of trivia about this. So, uh, Green ended up, he, he actually passed away in Georgia uh, years later. Uh, he was eventually, in 1778, became Quartermaster General of the United States. So he was well, basically in charge of making sure that everybody had everything they needed in order to carry out the final part of the war. Um, so incredibly important things that he did. I'm not going to go into all the, the, the battle in New York and well and whatnot that where he the florals he played. Uh, David McCulloch wrote a, a beautiful book called 1776. Talks quite a bit about Green and Washington and their interaction. Um, and there's many many other fine works I'm sure you could find uh, about him. But anyway, beautiful park here. Like I say, it's probably I'm going to make a stab that it's around an acre or so, maybe a little more than here in downtown Washington, D.C. There's a lovely park for the children to come and play. It's a Sunday morning in November, and you can see there's a few folks down here enjoying the park. Lots of seating. Typical of these parks is a circular walkway that goes around the center statue. It's a square, or rectangle park with a circular area in the middle. The main feature being the, the statue of green, and then of course this circular walkway, and then individual walkways radiating out like the rays of the sun out to the side sidewalks and benches all the way around, lovely trees. Very typical kind of park you'll find here in DC that is just beautiful. Anyway, so that's it. I'm not gonna go into any more detail about it. It was, the sculpture, if you care, was uh, Henry, Kirk Brown. All right. Now, Henry Brown also did several statues here in town of George Washington, but he did the sculpture of the statue of Winfield Scott, which you may remember that we did a video about, oh, I, don't know, I guess it's been a couple of years ago now. Uh, you might want to look for that. It's uh, downtown, very close, uh, not, well, actually, it's right by the United States Navy Memorial. So um, you might want to look that up. And, uh, if I can find it, I'll put a link in the description below so you can go straight to it. Um, anyway, so Henry Kirk Brown, obviously a very, very talented uh, 19th century sculptor. Because that is just a beautiful likeness. If you've seen paintings of green, the face is perfect. That looks like him. You can recognize that that is him. So anyway, folks. Thanks so much for joining us here. I hope you've enjoyed this. Got questions or comments? Leave them in the comment section down below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you're new here, hey, welcome. Thanks a lot for joining us. I hope you'll pick, subscribe, and come along for the adventure because we got lots more to show you. And as always, folks, well, thank you for watching.